Hey everybody, this is Ryan with HealthCloud. I'm super excited about today's product review. We're going to look at the Sonos Play Bass. Now, contrary to what that may sound like, it's a bass as in something you place your TV on. Sonos has made a name for itself with the Play Bar. In 2012, it released that product, and in 2017, Sonos released this Play Bass. But it's still something that you might want to consider when you're looking at creating sound in your living room or for even a theater for that matter. I read one reviewer. I don't know what he was thinking, but he said, man, because it's the Sonos Play Bass, you get really good low frequency sound. And that definitely had me scratching my head like, what? What did you just say? Like, what? The Play Bass basically hits this niche of consumers who, like me, have a TV sitting on top of a piece of furniture or a TV stand. And essentially, instead of using a play bar, which you might use for wall mounting your TV and then putting that play bar right below your TV, the play base allows you to actually set your television on top of the base. It is exactly what it sounds like, a base for your TV. It's not an actual base speaker. It does have base speakers in it, but it is a base as in B-A-S-E. So, for reference sake, over my left shoulder, you can see a 77-inch LEG OLED TV. So that'll give you some idea of the dimensions of my TV relative to what you have and what you might want to put it on. Now, as we unbox it, basically when you pull that Sonos sound base out, you can feel it is a heavy product. It's about 20 pounds, but it's substantial. It is an elegant product. It has that front metal mesh surround. I wouldn't say it's as high end of a looking product as maybe some of its competitors like the Bose Soundbar 700. But where this is a base, essentially a stand with speakers. And in this regard, Sonos has done a fantastic job of engineering some really good quality into a very, very small package. The dimensions of the Sonos are about 29 inches wide, just over two inches tall, and about 16 and a half inches deep. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your pedestal on your TV will sit nice on, nicely on top of that uh, play base. It can support upwards of about 75, 77 pounds of television. Now with today's modern televisions, that shouldn't be a problem where they're getting really, really thin. So in that tight confined space, Sonos had to figure out an engineer how to get a lot of volume out. And don't be surprised when I say this, I had to do a double take. But they have one bass, six mid speakers, and three tweeters. One bass, six mids, and three tweeters. That's 10 drivers in a two inch space. Now, I don't know how they do it. I'm glad they do it because I just get to enjoy the technology at the end of the day. Now what that allows them to do is craft some really great sound in a very, very small space. It's essentially a 3.0 sound system, but it covers a lot of those dynamic frequencies from really good lows to highs. So you're gonna get good center sound and where it has those curved edges, those sideways firing speakers are gonna help broaden out that sound. It doesn't have any upward firing drivers or upward firing speakers. So you're not gonna have Dolby Atmos or DTSX support. It's just simply going to take whatever high quality digital signal you're getting from your television, whether it's streaming or through a component, um, and it's gonna compress that down into a flat sound. So it's not gonna hit some of those immersive object driven sound that you'll get from maybe a Sony product or like the Samsung Q90R where it has that immersive sound, that object driven sound. When you add some component speakers behind it, you will get that 5.1 quality sound and you'll get really, really good surround sound. So you'll go from just the play bass with virtual sound by adding those component speakers to an actual surround sound system. And again, you'll get great surround sound, Dolby surround, all of those great technologies. You're just not gonna get the latest with the Dolby Atmos and the DTSX. It is a more expensive product. It is a $700 price tag. You might be able to hunt around on the internet and find it for a little bit less than that. So this is definitely a premium product. It is 
it is their top of the line that will rival the play bar. The interesting thing, the play bar is a little bit big and clunky, and so in front of my TV, it didn't seem to be the best fit, where the play base has a great fit, slides right under there. So as you can see, this is a very, very beautiful product on the top. They have pretty simple buttons. They have this, which is your volume down, this, which is your volume up, your select play pause, this is fast forward, and then that's rewind. So it's really pretty straightforward. By and large, you're mostly gonna wanna control this through the app. Here on the back, you get a sense for how simple this is. Essentially, you have three ports. You have your ethernet, your optical digital audio, and your power, and that's it. So Sonos has obviously opted for simplicity with just a single optical digital audio cord coming from your TV into the back of the Sonos Play base. Now that's a little bit older technology, so what does that mean for you? Newer future-proof technologies are moving to HDMI 2.0 and 2.1 and all of those future iterations, but also HDMI ARC or Audio Return Channel or HDMI EARC EARC, which is Enhanced Audio Return Channel. The Sonos Playbase doesn't support any of that. It's still using that older optical uh, audio input. Now they'll argue they're doing that for simplicity's sake. They basically want to have you run all of your HDMI cables into the back of your television and then have a simple optical return cable. Now where this is a play base, I can understand why. Basically, you're not worried about running HDMI cables behind your television because it's sitting on some furniture or a pedestal or stand. So it's really easy to hide those cords. And then you just simply take one optical cable right into the back of your Sonos, plug in the power, and you should be good to go. As for me, I like the idea of better future-proof technologies with that HDMI ARC and EARC. So that's something I want you to consider, and if that's a deal breaker for you, I get it. If that's something that you can live with, just understand that that's what you're getting out of the box. There are some great features about the Sonos lineup which is why they have so many raving fans. Now, it is incredibly easy to plug one of these in and turn it on. It's so easy, it's almost not worth showing you in the review. Simply power it on, open up your app, and boom, you'll find your, your product and you're good to go. Just where it connects through that Wi-Fi channel, the connectivity is really, really fabulous. They allow you to connect into your Wi-Fi and add multi-room control through basically the simplicity of their app. So if you've ever plugged in and turned on your Sono speakers and then walked into other rooms, you can have that sound follow you, control different rooms. You have really great multi-room control. So Sonos stands, I think, in front of all of its competitors in that regard. They don't offer Bluetooth connectivity. It's just through Wi-Fi. One of their ethos is that Bluetooth has some latency issues and it can cut in and out. And so I think they've opted for what they feel is a more stable Wi-Fi connectivity. So there are several component speakers that you can add into the Play Bass. And those components that you would consider buying would be their Bass and either their Sonos One or One SL component speakers. Now, there's not a lot of difference between the Sonos One and the Sonos One SL. Essentially, the One has a speaker built into it, so you have that voice assist and voice control with that speaker. Now, the One SL is simply a one speaker without the, the microphone. It's one speechless. Uh, so essentially, everyone jokes, Sonos dropped the mic, ha ha ha. That one SL just means speechless. So essentially, Sonos really did just drop the mic on that. Everything that you see here is what's in the box for these satellite component speakers and is similar for the bass and the play bar. So you get your quick start guide, which is basically three steps of plug it in, open up your app, and then add the product but you have the power cable, and then you have the little Sonos speaker, this component satellite speaker, 
which puts out a really a remarkably good sound and a lot of good volume. I was really surprised. So yeah, you can see this circular microphone right here. And the way these work, basically you can swipe forward and that's a fast forward. You can start on this function button and swipe backwards, that's reverse, play and pause. This just function light lets you know what, what you're doing and then just push up on this function button, that's volume up, push on this button, that's volume down. That's pretty simple, so it doesn't get easier than that. Again, the only difference between this and the SL is this one has the microphone with the, with the uh, little perforations for the microphone, that circular perforated microphone. And the one SL, the speakerless model, does not. But acoustically, they're the same. Visually, they're the same. And where it does have the voice assist, it is part of my living room system. So now I can do voice control for my speaker system with this product. So turn the volume up, turn the volume down wirelessly through voice assistant. So it's a really, really cool uh, feature of this product. So here you can see this uh, bass, the subwoofer speaker, the Sonos Sub, and it is a very, very sexy product. It's about 16 and a half, or 15 and a half by 16 inches square, and about six and a half inches deep. And it's got this great metallic cover. It's very, very shiny. It almost looks like a tempered glass, but it's definitely something metallic or hard plastic. But the beautiful thing about this sub as opposed to other subwoofers is the uh, the force frequency subwoofers you have two speakers right in here that face each other now as the speakers operate you'll get good clear sound coming out and then you have every action has an equal and opposite reaction so that driver on the back of that speaker is going to want to vibrate backwards as it's pushing that cone forwards so you get good clean frequency out but you have a little bit of some vibration back into this case. So where we have two speakers that are facing each other, as those vibrations come in and hit this case, it neutralizes those vibrations. So any rattling or distortion that you would get from a normal subwoofer, this subwoofer cancels those out. So you can turn this on, walk over and place your hand on it as it's playing and not feel any vibrations at all. So that's some really, really clever engineering on Sonos's part to develop really good bass. In the box, this is what it comes with. Basically, your power. You have four little dots with sticky on, tape on the back. So however you want to set this down, if you want to lay it face down, it's not a directional base. So you can lay it down vertically. You can have it against a wall, in a corner, in the middle of the room, wherever you would like. So that offers some real nice um, a, a flexibility with where you can place this speaker. Um, you simply, like all the other products, you plug it in down here on the bottom. Let me show you what we've got down here. You, you plug it in right down into this little channel here. And you also have the opportunity for an Ethernet. So basically everything has an Ethernet port and a power port. So plug that in, connect it. Um, if Sonos can't detect the device, you just press this button on the back, it will find the device and turn itself on. And then basically this adds an incredible amount of low frequency sound, really, really helps supplement that sound, those low frequencies and really build that power that you feel in those, in those really nice kind of cinematic scenes where you have T-Rex kind of rampaging through the screen or cars driving by you or buses or crashes. This thing really, really stands out. So I had to dig around just for a quick second through some of my menus um, to enable the optical out. And as soon as I did, we had sound. So trailers, boom, shakalaka. Let's just check out The Witcher. So you can see that there is, in fact, sound in that bass. Ooh, I already really, really like it. It's going to really, really sound good in this room, I can already tell. Now I know this is a little bit less than ideal, but I want to get you some sense of um, what this sounds like. So I'm going to play some royalty free music for you. And just, I understand out of the, out of the gate that obviously this is, you know, not going to translate really well for a YouTube channel, but I want you to get a sense of how good that sound is. 
coming through. You can you can get a sense again it's it's not even remotely close. I'm I I don't have a stereo microphone. I don't have any of the equipment that would be necessary to kind of convey what this sounds like. The sound quality out of the box is phenomenal. You get really good vocal clarity through background sounds and you get really great dynamic range of highs and lows with those tweeters and that really great low bass. Um, but you're going to want to use their true play uh, system to tune in your system into the house or wherever you place your sound bass. One of the drawbacks to the Sono system is their true play is only iOS compatible. So that means if you have an Android or any other phone, you're going to have to beg, borrow, or steal, bribe your friend to come over to your house and connect into your system and tune it for you because the difference in sound quality is substantial once you go through that true play, that tune, that room tuning um, that that offers you and allows you to do. Now we've completed uh, the true tune and the room is tuned in perfectly and you're gonna hear that thunder roll through and again it's not really great but you'll get a little bit of a sense of how that bass can pull and pull all those speakers in together. So what's the verdict? Now there is a lot to love about this play bass. It has great full sound especially on those lows and mids. The high sound gets a little bit tinny and that can be frustrating sometimes but when I plugged it in, I went to uh, Six Underground or Seven Underground, that new Ryan Reynolds uh, film. I was only planning on watching it for a second, but I was so pulled into that immersive sound that I watched the whole 20 some odd minute chase scene just because it was, I mean, the sound quality was phenomenal, especially after we tuned it into this room. I mean, it really took in the acoustics of the room and made a huge difference taking that play bass, which is 3.0, adding that play, uh, adding the Sonos bass, 3.1, and then those two satellite channels at 5.1, took it from a, a virtual surround sound to an actual surround sound, and it was fun. The, the pluses for it are, it is phenomenal sound. Those mids, those lows are really, really great. Um, so the sound quality is good. You're gonna have a little bit of some weirdness on top. You'll get really great volume and your whole house will shake and you will love it. Whether you're watching some really great 4K content, streaming something, or you're just having a dance party by yourself while you're making dinner in your kitchen, whatever it is that you may be doing with this system, you will love to turn the volume up on it and really, really just ride it hard because it, it just wants more. I mean, you turn up volume and it just wants more. Now, there are definitely some things I don't like about the system. And we'll talk about those, especially with the optical digital audio. That return, I'm sorry, I think it just sucks. You don't have a HDMI ARC, you don't have HDMI E ARC, and you don't have HDMI CEC. So what does that mean? So that means if you have a remote like I do right here, when you point it at that uh, play bass and try to program that remote, if it's a radio frequency remote like this remote, your play bass won't communicate with it. So that means while I'm watching a movie, if someone comes walking in, I can't simply grab this remote. I have to pull out my phone and turn it down on the app or actually walk up to the play bass itself. If you have that infrared remote, you'll be totally happy. Sonos will pick it up. You can have your television remote or a universal remote shoot at it and it'll work. My remote didn't work and that was kind of a frustration for me. Now the product is Again, phenomenal. The sound quality is phenomenal. Ease of setup is really great. Adding other products um, 
whether it's a base component or satellite component speakers in the back, taking it from a 3.0 to 3.1 or even a 5.1 is very easy. Now the interface on the Sonos app is really easy to use. You can kind of glide through, add products, stream products. So if you're streaming uh, and wanting to listen to music, it's a phenomenal product. You can add different rooms and control it all through the Sonos app. So they really have got that right. And the sound quality, I can back it up. The sound quality is wonderful, especially at those higher volumes when you really want to feel that sound and, and shake your house, whether you're watching movies or, or streaming music. Um, but that optical digital audio, I think that is just the, the big drawback for me. So really consider that, weigh that into account. If you have an, eye, uh, an infrared remote, you'll be happy. Unbox it, plug it in, turn on your favorite movie and just sit back and really enjoy that sound. Um, so I would have no problems recommending this device. It is phenomenal. I do also highly recommend adding the bass. If, if there's two things that you can afford that play bass and then add the, the Sonos bass module to take it to 3.1, you'll have a great sound system if space is kind of a confinement. If you want to add those two rear component speakers, they have that wireless connectivity. I mean, obviously you're still going to have to plug it in, so it's not going to be truly wireless, um, but put it next to a plug like I have. They're not in ideal locations in my kitchen. Um, they sit over my fireplace and up over my uh, refrigerator in the back but they add so much more complexity to that music. There are a lot of features that work for it. It isn't DTSX and it doesn't support Dolby Atmos, but the sound quality on a Dolby 5.1 is remarkably good. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We really love and appreciate your viewership. If you liked the content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get those alerts. Um, additionally, if you have any comments or questions, just jump in the comment section below, write us a question. We try to get to them as quickly as we can. And then if you have any suggested videos that you'd like, whether it's a tech tip or product that you want to see unboxed or an in-depth review of, just hit us up in the comment section below. We'll try to create that content for you and customize it for you so that we're hitting the answering those questions that you, uh, that you have. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a great afternoon.